Hello again, my name's John, I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video. And in this video recipe I'll be making this delicious steak and kidney pie and I'll also be making some rich thick gravy to go with it. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on my website. I'll leave links at the end and under the video or just click on the eye icon top right of the screen. Before I go any further I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators and they are Abdullah Altikate, Peter War, Ian Chappell, Mary Lanier, William Townsend, Jeremiah Dole, Marcus Fritz. Finally, Ray Brophy, Marco Overgaard, Marcus Nest, Jutta Schneider, William Morrow, Roger Baines and Brian Cusack. Thanks very much guys, it really does help the channel. I'll start by greasing the pie tin and these are the dimensions of the type of tin I'll be using. You can of course just use an ordinary dinner plate like this one. Now I'm using lard to grease mine, which is pure refined pork fat in my case. And if you don't use pork products, you can use butter, oil or shortening. But if you can use lard, it is the best release agent. OK, it'll be a while before I need this tin. I like to keep mine in the fridge rather than let it sit around a warm kitchen. I'll start the recipe by making the steak and kidney pie filling, beginning with dicing the onion as shown. The next job is to cut 3 to 4, that's about 200 grams or 7 ounces of lamb's kidney into small pieces. If you're not keen on kidney, just leave it out, but you will have to make up the weight with diced beef. When cutting the kidneys, cut around the tough white fatty tissue in the middle of the kidney and discard it. Once cut, place it in the fridge until needed. Time to cook the pie filling. You can of course use a couple of cans of cooked diced beef for this recipe, but I'm making the whole thing from scratch. It's cheaper, tastier and you get a good amount of delicious rich gravy at the end. I'll start by frying off the onions in a teaspoon of vegetable oil for a couple of minutes. Next is the 900 grams, that's two pound, of good quality lean stewing steak. Don't forget the ingredients list and full written method for this dish is now on the recipe page on my website. Next I'm adding a pint of stock. I'm using chicken stock, but any stock will do. And if you're feeling adventurous, try half a pint of stock and half a pint of strong stout beer. Guinness is ideal. And to give it a bit more flavour and colour I'm adding a couple of these crumbly stock cubes as well. OK I'll give that a good mix. I'm also adding this bunch of fresh thyme leaves. If you can't get fresh thyme use a teaspoon of dried thyme. There's no need to add the kidneys yet, they'll go in nearer the end. OK, I'll bring that to a simmer, cover the pot and set the timer for one hour. You can of course make this pie filling way ahead of time, even the day before. OK, while the meat's cooking I'll make the pastry. I'm using my processor to make mine. It's much better and easier this way. But if you want to know how to make it by hand, check out my chicken and mushroom pie video. There'll be a link top corner of the screen. First I'll add the 340 grams, that's 12 ounces of plain or all-purpose flour, followed by the 85 grams, that's 3 ounces of butter and the same amount of lard or shortening. 
and I'll give that a quick burst until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. Next to go in is the salt, followed by the 150 ml, that's 150 grams, that's 4 ounces of cold water. It's important to get the correct amount of water, so if you've got digital scales it's always more accurate to weigh it. Right, I'll just let the machine go. Once it starts riding around the machine, as you'll see, then the pastry's done. And there it goes. And in real time, using the processor, that only took about 1 minute and 20 seconds to make. Not only is it quicker to use a processor, it's much better as it keeps everything cold. And pastry likes everything cold. Right, I'll cut it in half, wrap it in cling film and get it into the fridge for at least 30 minutes before using it. And to remind you, if you want to make this pastry by hand, check out my chicken and mushroom pie video. There's a link top right of the screen at the end of the video and also in the description box under the video. Time to check on the meat. I'll take out the bunch of time as it's done its job now. And it's time to add the chopped kidneys. These only take a few minutes to cook. And like I said earlier, you don't have to use these kidneys in this recipe, but they do impart a fantastic flavour into the pie. OK, I'll bring that back to a simmer, cover the pan, and once the time's up, I'll check to see if it's tender enough. To thicken the filling, I'm using corn flour. You may know that as corn starch. I'll mix up 30 grams, that's one ounce, and exactly the same weight in cold water. And this should be enough to thicken the filling and a separate gravy, as you'll see in a moment. OK, that's the time up and it's been simmering now for a full hour. I'll try a sample of the meat to make sure it's tender enough to proceed to the next step. Depending on the cut of meat you're using, this time may vary, but this lean steak is normally ready in an hour. If yours is still a bit tough, just give it a bit more time, it will get there in the end. Mine's fine, so I'll strain most of the juice into a separate pan. This will become the gravy a little later. And leave about an inch or 25 millimetres in the bottom of the pan. First I'll thicken the pie filling using a third of the corn flour mixture as shown. Once that's thickened the filling is done. Set it aside to cool. A little tip here, if you want it to cool a bit quicker, sit the pan in a sink of cold water. And while that's cooling, you can thicken the gravy with the rest of the corn flour. But just add a little at a time to reach the level of thickness you prefer. Time to preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, on gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 because my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. Time to start rolling the pastry. First thing to do is dust the bench and the pin with flour. If you're not familiar with rolling pastry, this is something you need to practice at to get a feel for it. 
The only thing I'll suggest is roll backwards and forwards in straight lines and turn the pastry 90 degrees. Once the pastry becomes too big to turn, then turn the pin 90 degrees. That should keep the pastry reasonably round. Check with your tin that your pastry is big enough, then simply roll it onto the pin and roll it off the pin onto the tin. Make sure you tuck the pastry right down into the corners of the tin. A little tip here, for those with long fashionable nails, make yourself a little ball of pastry, dip it in flour and use that to push down into the corners. Right, I'll put that aside for a minute and quickly go through rolling out the top pastry for the pie. OK, that's the top ready to go. Now to stop the bottom of the pastry from lifting in the oven, prick the base with a fork as shown. <laughs> and before anyone asks in the comments, no, the pie filling will not leak out through the holes. So many people asked that question with my apple pie recipe. Time to add the filling. Spread the filling out until it's even. Once the filling's evenly spread, brush water all around the rim. The water is the glue that sticks both pastries together. Now roll over the top pastry and crimp the edges. Most people have their own way of doing this and this is how I do it. Another good way is to go around the edge pressing down with the tip of a fork. Once you've crimped all the way around cut off the excess, tidy it up and brush with beaten egg. The excess pastry can be rolled up into a ball, put in a plastic bag and frozen. You can use that to go towards the base of your next pie. Give the whole surface of the pastry a good coat with the beaten egg. After you've done the egg wash, it'll need vent holes. For this type of pie, I simply stick a few holes around using a fork. Now get it into the preheated oven and set the timer for 25 minutes. Remember, the filling's already cooked. It's just the pastry you need to concentrate on. Once the time's up, check the colour. If it's a nice shiny golden brown, it's ready to come out. If yours is still a little pale, give it another five minutes. This could very well happen as ovens run at different temperatures. Now I'll get it onto a wire rack and let it settle down and cool for a while. And I'll cut a slice out and let you see what it's like on the inside. And of course, do the all-important taste test. Right, it's been cooling for a while, so here we go. And this pie will yield eight good portions. If you want to freeze it, first let it cool and get it into the fridge for a few hours. Once completely chilled, it'll be much easier to cut. Wrap each slice individually in plastic wrap and then get them into the freezer. And that looks amazing. And my goodness, the smell is fantastic. Fantastic. 
I can't really try this without a little of that rich gravy. Right, I'm going in. And honestly, that steak and kidney pie is the best you'll ever taste, even if I say so myself. And like I said earlier, if you want to take this to another level, try the half stock and half stout ale version. And that's another thumbs up, my friends. And once again, please help support the channel by joining my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month or make a one-off donation via my PayPal page. It really will help keep the channel going. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.